pretty much all of the soldering videos that I have on my channel have been filmed using this Uplift V2 commercial desk. And the reason that it's so awesome is the fact that it's a standing desk, meaning that it could be at this seated position down here, but with the touch of a button, uh, there we go. It could be at this standing position so that I don't have to sit at this chair. I can actually stand and it's at an ergonomic level. Now being able to solder while standing is a big game changer for me. I really think that it's more ergonomic and uh, it gives me a chance to, you know, gather all the parts that I need and be able to work without having to bend over. Now the only problem with this uplift desk is it's really expensive. This is a 60 by 30 V2 commercial desk. The commercial means that there's a bar, you can't really see it, but there's a crossbar that goes between the two legs, so it's to make it a little more sturdy. This configuration is $1,100 today with the rubber wood top. I already have this IKEA Carlby countertop. This is like a walnut veneer countertop that IKEA sells for their kitchen cabinets. It's 25 and a half inches by like 74 inches long, so it's actually longer but narrower than the uplift desk I have over there. I used to have this Carlby countertop on top of the Ikea Alex, um, I don't know, drawer things. I had two of them. The only problem with that is obviously it's in a fixed position. It didn't go up and down like the standing desk does. So I wanna save a little bit of money and reuse my Ikea Carlby countertop to create my own sit standing desk. So that's where this comes in. I bought this on Amazon. This is the Top Sky dual motor three stage electric adjustable standing desk frame. The reason I bought this one over the countless other sit standing frames on Amazon is because it has at least on paper, a 300 pound load capacity, which is higher than some of the other ones on Amazon. The other reason I like this frame is because it supports a wide range of tabletop sizes in case you don't have an Ikea Carlby like I do. The minimum tabletop size is 47.2 inches by 23.6 inches, and the maximum is 80 inches by 31.5 inches. And it also has three memory positions, which is great. That's one of the key features I like about my uplift desk is that you can save certain heights in case you cycle back and forth like a sitting position and a standing position, you can just hit the button instead of having to go through the whole up and down process to find the exact height that you like. All right, let's get this out of the box. The instructions being on the top is really cool, so that way I can actually read through them before pulling all the stuff out of the box. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you to death by actually going step by step, showing you how to put this together because the instructions seem pretty thorough. So I'm gonna skip ahead to me actually putting the frame mostly together, and then we're gonna see how it installs on my IKEA Carbly countertop. Are you an electronics hobbyist or creator looking to take your projects to the next level? PCBWay has you covered. Whether it's custom PCBs, 3D printing, CNC machining, or even injection molding, PCBWay offers everything you need to make your project come to life. With their PCB assembly service, they'll not only manufacture your PCBs, but also source and solder your components for you. Whether you're building your own project or an open source project, PCBWay makes it easy to create professional quality PCBs without breaking a sweat. Learn more by visiting the link in the video description. It's the next day and I've got the frame fully assembled and I wanted to give you a couple of notes about what I thought about it. I like how it's symmetrical, meaning all the parts are not, uh, they're not labeled left to right. So uh, like the legs, for example, you can put them on either side. The only thing you have to make sure is to make these uh, screw hole tab parts need to be facing on the, uh, on the outside. The other thing I've done is with a permanent marker, I've drawn a center line in the middle of the table here and that's where I'm gonna eyeball the frame um, in a second here when I go to install it on the bottom of the table. I haven't fully screwed down these center bar screws here yet because this middle part should be a little bit adjustable for the length of your table. So let's go ahead and put the frame sort of on that center, center mark. One of the things I don't really like is they don't really give you a measurement here as far as how far away this bar has to be from the edge of the table. The instructions make it seem like this is not really supposed to be up against the edge. And that's not a bad thing because that's actually the thing I don't like the most about my uplift desk is that the 
edge where the uplift desk frame meets the tabletop is fixed because they pre-drilled the screws for that tabletop and the edge of the frame butts up right against the edge of the table. So it makes it pretty much impossible to fit things like monitor arms or boom arms for like a microphone on the edge of the table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of position, and I'm gonna eyeball this, I'm not really gonna measure, position the frame so that there's sort of like a, a 45 angle here, right? So the distance between the edge of the table here is about the same as the edge of the table here. And with the frame lined up, I'm just gonna use the final screws to attach the frame to the tabletop with my uh, DeWalt drill. I didn't actually need to pre-drill this. Uh, the Carly tabletop is not actually real wood. I'm pretty sure it's particle board on the inside, but if you have a real wood, a solid wood tabletop, you may need to pre-drill the holes here uh, or else you might risk stripping the screws. Okay, with these two outside screws screwed in, I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite end. And with the ends of the legs secure, we can screw these screws in the middle of the frame. Now seems like a good time to screw in these screws to secure the center. It's also probably a good time to tighten up the screws here on the frame wherever you need to use this uh, Allen wrench. And finally, we need to secure the controller onto the desk. This is how you control going up and down with the desk, as well as accessing the different memory positions. This is the front left corner of my Carbly table, and this is where I'm going to secure my controller. While we're here, we can actually connect the motor controller wires. Uh, there's a short wire and a long wire. The short wire is gonna to connect to the leg that's closest to the controller, and the long wire is gonna to connect to the one that's obviously furthest away. I don't think it matters which order they go into. And then the last connector is for the AC adapter. All right, the only thing left to do is to flip the table over and to test it out. I've gone ahead and flipped the table over and using the up and down arrows, I've set it to a comfortable sitting position. I've put most of my soldering gear on it basically as a test bed to test the weight of this whole thing. In case you cared about all the gear that I have on my soldering workstation, I have my Amscope microscope. This thing is pretty heavy. I have my Hako FR301 desoldering gun. I have this um, top down rig that I normally place this camera on top of so that I can get some good footage of when I'm actually soldering things. I have my iGen T3A soldering iron. I really like this because it has uh, hot swappable tips and the base here detects when I have the iron actually placed in it and it will put it into idle mode. I have this cheap Kato fume extractor so that I, if I'm soldering something that has a lot of um, flux fumes, whatever, I can I can turn this on. I have this little spool of solder here. I have my Aiton ST862D uh, hot air rework station, and I have this silicone mat here. So this is pretty much everything that I would normally have on my soldering workstation, with the exception of maybe a monitor, which uh, we're gonna have to see how that goes in the future. I've also gone ahead and set up a standing preset using the preset feature here, which is basically use the up and down arrows to get a position that you like, press the S key on the controller, and then press one of the numbers to set that height uh, for that given number. So I've been messing around with this already, but I wanted you to see how uh, quickly or slowly it raises up from the sitting position to the standing position. Uh, that's actually not that awful. I know that this tabletop is pretty heavy and all the stuff on top of it is pretty heavy. So at the very least, I'm happy that I can even lift all this stuff up. Now I've set the desk to a comfortable standing position here and I just wanted to show you how much this desk shakes with all the things I have on top of it. <laughs> it's pretty shaky. The reason that's not necessarily a great thing for me, which it might not matter for you, is that I actually record footage and I need it to be, um, you know, somewhat stable on top of this overtop uh, rig. Here's a quick comparison of my Uplift V2 desk loaded with all these monitors, some speakers, um, keyboards and everything. And you'll notice how little it shakes compared to the top sky frame that I just showed you. It shakes a little bit but I have to really try more 
whoops, <laughs> I have to really try more to shake this desk than I do the top sky with the Carlby tabletop. I figured I would actually try to shake the tabletop while recording from the overhead rig just to show you, or just to show myself really, how much shake there might be if I'm wiggling the table while I'm doing work. I can't really tell from this little preview I have on my Sony camera. My Sony camera does have in-body image stabilization as well as the lens does, so it might actually take some of that shake away, but I'll have to wait and see in uh, DaVinci Resolve when I actually look at this footage on a bigger monitor. Overall though, if you're looking for a utility table or some way to just elevate your workspace so that you have a more ergonomic soldering experience, I think that this top sky frame will actually do a really good job, especially for the money compared to something like the uplift desk. For comparison, let's say that the Carlby tabletop plus the top sky frame is probably about $550 total versus the, what, $1,100 that the Uplift V2 frame would go for. Um, that's about half price. So it's up to you whether or not you think that it would be worth it. I'm gonna leave an affiliate link for the Top Sky frame in the video description. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so if pretty much anybody that watches this video subscribes, if you haven't already, I'll probably hit that goal. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.